Hey there friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping in today. I'm back with another new layout for the Paige Evans design team and I'm using her new Splendid collection again and I went through the 12 by 12 paper pad and I knew that I had to use these butterflies on a layout and I wanted to incorporate a big title and so I'm going to be using something from this paper with the big letters for a title. I also pulled the butterfly paper from the six by eight paper pad so I could have a couple different sizes. And I'm just gonna start to fussy cut. Uh, I'm thinking of using all the colors as usual because I just like using a rainbow variety of colors. So I'm just gonna take some time and fussy cut out several of these big butterflies and then some of the smaller ones and then try to incorporate them into a design that works with a big title. And I've said uh, in many instances on different layouts from my experience that when I wanna use something big, uh, like a big title or a big image or a big shape or something that I wanna start with that first in the very early stages of designing the layout because it's really hard for me to add big things later on. So that's why I wanna start with the big things. So I went ahead and cut out a good day and I'm gonna make that my title. And I've got all those butterflies cut out and there are my two photos. And I love these kind of photos. Uh, the way my daughter's looking up, I'm gonna make it to where it looks like she's looking up at all these butterflies floating around. And I'm gonna kind of start with that idea and just play around with everything. Uh, I want it to look kind of scattered and random with the where the butterflies go. I don't want it to be in a specific orderly pattern. I just want it to kind of look like she's outside and all these butterflies were just flying around, you know. And then somehow, some way, I'm gonna make that title fit. I don't know where it's gonna go. So um, I'm just gonna start with that. I also wanted to use some different pattern papers on the background. And so these two jumped out at me. And all of these papers I pulled from the 12 by 12 Splendid paper pad. Uh, they also come in the individual papers. Um, if you're looking to buy just each sheet by itself, you could also do that. Um, I wanna use some pinks, some blues, some yellows, all the colors that are going on in the butterflies. And I just wanted to create maybe some paper strips kind of down on the bottom half of the layout to kind of give the photos a shelf to rest on. Uh, so this is me just cutting up some of these strips. I'm not quite sure what it's gonna look like. I may like it, I may not. I may go across the whole page like this, I don't know. A lot of this was just experimenting and seeing how it looked as I went. Because you know, sometimes I have an idea going on in my head and it looks great in my mind. And then when I start to do it on the actual layout, it does not translate the, the same way. So we're just gonna see how it goes. Now, you know, I am gonna do some mixed media because I'm obsessed with mixed media. I don't think I can make a layout without it at this point. So I'm gonna create um, a background for the mixed media. And I'm using clear gesso here from Art Basics. Finnebear. I love that clear gesso. It's very smooth. And then I'm going to use textured white cardstock for the background because I want the texture to show through when I put the, the watercolor and the inks and things on the background. So I've got that dry and I think what I'm going to do is do the top half of this layout a blue color. And so this is what I like to do when I use my Distress Oxides, when I'm going to try to create a big chunk of watercolor on the background. I just take the ink pad and scrape it on the actual paper and then water it down and it instantly just creates this beautiful magic watercolor. And the gesso is what makes this happen so beautifully, especially on textured white cardstock. This is not watercolor paper. It's just plain old cardstock. And so, um, you know, if you want it to kind of turn into watercolor and spread and blend like this, gesso is the way to go. So at the top, I went with the blue because I was trying to think of maybe like a sky behind all those butterflies and then a pink purpley color at the bottom. Um, and just kind of create this nice purple in the middle where they blend. And you can kind of see on the background where I scraped the gesso, it also creates a fun texture. And so I just love making all these different 
textures, for lack of a better word. I know I say that a lot, um, but that's what it is. And I think it's so fun when it dries. It just it just looks cool. And um, I went with blues and pinks because I felt like those were nice, bright colors that would enhance the butterflies. And then down at the bottom, I thought the pink purpley colors would go well because of the yellow title and it would make the yellow title stand out. So I'm mixing and matching some of my shimmer sprays with the Distress Oxides. The, the, the blue Distress Oxide that I used up top was Peacock Feathers, I think is what it was. And then down at the bottom, I mixed um, Seedless Preserves with Picked Raspberry. And then the shimmers colors I'm mixing in are almost the same colors. Um, I added a squirt of a little bit of an orangey color down there at the bottom. And then this color here is Sweetheart by Shimmers. The orangey color that I sprayed is Vibes Sunset Strip. And I love mixing those two products together. Those are my two favorite mixed media products, Distress Oxides and Shimmers. Um, and I'll link the Shimmers website down below if you wanna give those a try. There's a ton of colors, a ton of different styles. There's sprays, there's paints. There's uh, pastes, there's all kind of stuff. But I felt like these two colors would look really pretty with the, the photos, the butterflies, and then the strips of paper that I wanted to add in. Um, I would basically call this a standard Missy layout because, um, you know, I do a lot of the same techniques. I just enjoy doing it. And there's all the texture I was talking about. I love that. It looks different every time. But I kind of can predict what it might look like or in a roundabout way what it's going to look like. But it still has a, a unique finish every time. And that's the beauty of mixed media is you're going to get a different look. It's hard to replicate the exact same thing every time. Uh, I'm going to use those same shimmer sprays to add some splatters. That blue color there is Jenny B. Blue, which is my favorite shimmers blue. And I want these to be kind of subtle, a little bit of an orangey color there, just to kind of pull in the orange from the butterfly. And if you want these dots to dry dark, leave them like that. Don't touch them, just let them air dry. And if you want to soften them up, do this. Take a roll of paper towels and just gently roll it right over your background. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make sure that the dots maintain their circle shape. I've found that that's the best way to dab things up and keep it the same shape. Because you know, sometimes when you just take a paper towel and kind of use your hand to just smush down, it, it creates a blob. It takes away that circle of the splatter and it just makes it smushy. So if you want it to still look like a circle, either A, leave it alone, or B, roll over it. Or you could also take a paper towel and roll a little sharp edge or a little sharp point and very lightly dab it up. You know, it just depends on the look you're going for, really. Uh, this is another thing I love to do on colored backgrounds is splatter down some white acrylic paint. Just add a little bit there on my desk and then make sure my brush has a lot of water on it and then just splatter, splatter, splatter. And this is great for softening up colors or just giving it more of a weathered look. It just kind of has this hazy, faded look, you know? And again, I like to roll the paper towel over it to make it look more subtle. If you want it to look really uh, stark white, just leave it alone and let it dry on its own. But I love that effect. It just kind of looks bleached out. So I'm going to start to work on the layering kind of underneath the photos here. I just wanted something for them to sit on. And um, I decided to not go across the entire page. So I'm just gonna rip and tear and create some jagged edges and start to layer. Uh, I don't feel like I've layered in a long time. Um, I've been seeing so many layouts lately that are inspiring me, which is a good thing because I feel like I've been in a funk for a long time. And um, when I'm in a funk, I like to look at other people's layouts and find things within those layouts that inspire me, techniques I want to try. Um, because, you know, once you have scrapbooked for so long, 
like me, you, you kind of get into your, your habits and you get into your techniques that you are comfortable with and that you know work for you and that you love to do. And I love, I love that. But at the same time, you get burnt out, you know, it's like I'm making the same layout over and over again. It's the same thing, even though it's not, it feels like it is. So um, I'm seeing some things that are kind of giving me ideas to try and uh, just to kind of get out of my comfort zone and do something different for a while. So hopefully I will be working on that in the future. Um, I'm playing around with everything here. I'm going to wind up moving the title because if you see where it is now, I feel like it's covering up too much of those layers. You can't really see the pink paper and I like the pink paper kind of peeking out there. So I'm going to play around with it. I'm going to go ahead and glue these layers together because I do like how they look. And uh, that's where they're going to go. I wanted to make sure that the photos were kind of down on the lower right hand area. Oh, I did some stitching. I let that glue dry and I took each of those three colors and just did some messy lines back and forth because I like stitching. I like the way it looks. Plus, it makes sure that everything is, is down. It's not going to come up, but it also gives some great texture and interest and detail. And I love that. Um... But I like the way the photos are situated where they are because, like I said, it looks like she's looking up. And it's, you know, you think, well, what is she looking at? Well, we're going to give her those butterflies to look at. So I love when my, when my photos just kind of work out. And that kind of inspired me to do the butterflies to make it look kind of realistic to where she's looking at them. So I'm going to layer those on top of those paper strips. And then come back in with the butterflies again. And I don't know why I did this. I kind of wanted to darken up the pink. So I came back in with the Seedless Preserves, which is that deep pinkish purple Distress Oxide. And I thought I would just dab a little bit down here on the bottom. In the end, it doesn't really do anything um, because I really wanted the title to stand out. Because at this point, that's where the title was going to go. I don't know. Sometimes I do things and then I backtrack and say, you know what, you didn't even need to do that. But you never know until you do it. Like I said, you got something going on in your head. You feel like it needs to be done. And then you do it and you think, I didn't really need to do that. Um, I'm adding some adhesive foam behind the photos there because I like to give them dimension. And then now we're going to work on the butterflies. I want some of them to overlap. I want them to be just kind of scattered all over the place and layered and um, but not to where it's completely covering up the background I'm gonna come back in oh yeah this is another shimmers called pink Moscato and it is the perfect match for that seedless preserves distress oxide and um, this is a shimmers I think it's it's a new to me I don't think I've used it maybe once um, Oh gosh, I've already put it up. What's the name of it? I'll have to look it up. But it's a really pretty minty teal color. And I really didn't even need to use it because it was the same color that I'd already created on the background and it just kind of blended in. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of the Jenny B Blue. And I just wanted a little bit of a darker shade peeking out from underneath the photo that's going to be on the left. So that's what I'm doing here. Um... Just, just to try to give it a little bit of a variation using my fingers, using the brush to smudge and blend. And I know I've said it a million times and I'll say it again. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty when you do uh, mixed media like this. Sometimes your fingers can be the best tools when it comes to smudging and blending and smearing your colors around, especially when you use gelatos, which I haven't used those in a while and I haven't used them on this layout, but um, yeah, sometimes your hands are, are better than a brush. So I've kind of got everything, uh, especially the photos, where they're gonna go. Um, before I glue those down, I wanna add in some thread and I'm gonna use pink and the aqua blue color there. I'm going to add the pink underneath the photos there and then the blue. I just thought it would be nice to just kind of blend it in with the background, the same color, and just give it a little bit of interest there and not something that's going to really stand out too much. 
Um, and I'm trying to, again, organize the title down here. But see, it's covering up things. It's covering up the orange now. It's covering up the pink paper. It's covering up the thread. And it's so big, it's going to take up a lot of space. And so, you know, I'm glad that I started with that and had it in mind because I knew that I was going to use this big title. But the thing is, is it's so big, it's going to cover stuff up and it's going to take up a lot of space. And so I've got to figure out how to use it without covering up stuff I want to be visible. So that's what I'm going to work out. But I know the photos aren't going to move, so I'm going to glue those down. And then just work around that. I decided to move it over to the left. And I like that because there's not a lot of stuff over there that's super important that will be covered up. So I felt like that was a good decision. And then I'm going to pop it up too. I'm going to cut some adhesive foam really small and skinny little strips there and then pop it up so it creates some shadowing and some dimension and then get all of that glued down. And I like how that looks. And I like that it adds a nice bright pop of yellow against the background colors and the paper strips. Now I can come in with the butterflies because everything is pretty much attached to where it's going to go except for the butterflies. So that's my next order of operations. And the cool thing about butterflies is they give you instant dimension. So all you have to do is add a little strip of glue to the, the middle, the bodies, and then the, the wings just bend up off the page. So if you're a fan of dimension, you know, butterflies are always a good way to get that. And of course, it is going to get smushed down when you put it in your albums. That's just, you know, anything is going to get smushed down, but it, they're easy to pop up. You know, if you pull it out of your album and you want to show somebody, you can easily bend the wings back up. So, but yeah, I don't want to glue those down completely flat. So then I'm going to start working on stickers and die cuts and things. Um, I pulled out the cardstock sticker sheet and I really love this shiny gold banner but it's just it's sticky of course because it's a sticker so i wanted to trim off some of the white border so to take off the sticky i just put some powder on the background and i love how that looks i love that it's gold and shiny and i thought it would be perfect to add right under the photos because it's the perfect length the perfect length and i felt like that would be kind of cool to add a little pop of shine and i'm going to fix that pink thread because it kind of covers up the thread and I want that thread to be visible but I'm going to glue that down because I felt like it looked really nice and I like how it some of it's covered up with the overlap but you still know it's there. Uh, this is the eight page sticker book and there's all kinds of stickers in there. There's paper stickers, there's clear stickers, there's metallic stickers, this little sheet of sentiments. I'm going to use a couple of those. Um, at this point, I'm looking for small things. I've already done all the big stuff. So I'm looking for little things to add in for detail here and there. I'm not sure where some of these little things are going to go. So it takes a little bit of time to kind of try them in different areas. Um, this is the 6 by no, 6 by 12 How about 12x12 12 12 <laughs> chipboard stickers? And I'm going to use, I try a couple, but I only wind up using one. That little piece over by the word day, it says, I can't think of what it says. I can't see. I still can't read it because I can't see. I'm blind. It says something like fantastic or wonderful or s happiness. It says happiness. I'm going to use that. I tried this other little piece, but I just could not find a home for it, so it's going to go back on the sticker sheet. And then here's where I'm going to add in some more of the dark pink thread to try to add on to what I'd already used because some of it was covered up. And I like how it adds that little dark, um, darker bit of pink right there underneath that blue butterfly. Because one of the butterflies over by the letter A is that darker pink color. And so that kind of echoes that color over down here on this part of the layout. And then I'm going to get that glued down. I'm using Scotch Tacky Glue in my bottle. 
I love that glue. It's the only liquid glue that I use, and it's the only glue that I've ever put in my fine liner bottle. And you can tell by my bottle how long I've used this particular bottle because it's got gesso and paint and stuff all over it. But um, it's been going for a long time. I love that glue. This is the Jen Hadfield Gold Glitter Spray. You know, I had that little gold banner, so I thought, yep, we need some gold splatters. And then I got to looking after I took a break, and I thought, there's just a lot of pink going down here at the bottom. So I thought I would smudge some of it out and lighten it up so it wasn't so bold. So that's just white gesso and my little scrapey acrylic brush there. So I'm just kind of softening it up. Uh, not trying to cover it up. I just wanted a little more subtle so that dark pink really shows over on the right side there. And then the left side's just kind of a softer pink. And I like how that looks. I love some white gesso. Oh my gosh, it can do so much. And this is something I tried, wind up not using. I got out this little tiny butterfly punch and started punching out all the colors to kind of scatter around. But I felt like it... These colors are so bold, it kind of darkened up the layout and it became too too much, I feel like. Um, so I wind up not using all of these. I use one. I use one, um, but the more I added, the more I thought, oh, it kind of clutters it up and makes it look too much. So I just go for this one little pink one right here on the title just to pull in some of that dark pink color. And then I do use this epoxy sticker from the epoxy, they're kind of like epoxy puffy stickers that says right now. And I love that it's purple and it's perfect because it just helps bring in the purple color because we do have some purple butterflies and I felt like that the bottom half of the layout needed a little bit of purple. So I'm going to add that in. And even if it's a sticker, I'm still going to add glue because I use the gesso and the paint, you know, things tend to not stick very well. But here's what I've got so far. I love how this looks. I love the textures and the dimensions. Awesome. I love it. Love, love, love it. Um, I'm almost finished. Um, what are we going to do now? Oh, yeah. I felt like uh, I wanted to add some trails kind of coming out from some of the butterflies. But uh, I, I like to stitch it most of the time. But there's just not a lot of space to do a lot of machine stitching. And with everything glued down, I was like, uh-uh, I'm not sticking this through my sewing machine. So I just got my white gel pen and kind of sketched in some little trails there. So it looks like, you know, they left a little trail when they're floating through the air. And it also adds a little bit of interest and detail to the top. And it's pretty subtle, but I like how that looks. And I'm not over my obsession with the Nouveau Glimmer Paste. So I thought, you know what, we're going to add some gold down here at the bottom. So I'm just sticking my finger in there and smudging some gold sparkles down here at the bottom to pull in a little bit more gold. Look at that. Oh, if you're a fan of glitter, but you hate glitter at the same time, then you need this stuff. I mean, it's in a paste, so there's going to be no glitter on your floor. There's going to be no glitter on your desk. And it dries very quickly and it just, it sparkles and shines and oh my gosh. Again, I'm just using my finger to smudge some around to give this layout some glittery sparkle because it's so pretty. I mean, you could smudge this stuff on anything and instantly you're just going to say, oh my gosh, ooh, ah, oh, look at that. And it comes in a ton of colors. Uh, I got it at scrapbook.com. Oh, it's lovely. It's so good. And then I decided to do my journaling, and I'm going to use my metallic gold pen and try to write over this glitter. I should have done this first, but oh well, you know, you live and you learn. I just tried to do it the best I could, and then I'm going to add the date, and I'm going to use the date stamp that comes with the Splendid Collection, or it comes in the Splendid Collection. I'm going to use gold ink, and that's going to wrap it up. That's it. That's the final layout. I really love how this turned out. It's a lot of fun to make. I think the colors are so pretty. The butterflies, oh, they're great. There's a whole sheet of those butterflies, so you could just go to town. There's the gold, the uh, gold glimmer paste, um, the beautiful yellow title. I love the background. You can see the texture there from the cardstock. So yeah, oh, there's another shot of it. I took all these close-ups. I hope this gives you some ideas to try. I hope it inspired you in some way. Maybe you will try something uh, that uh, is in this video, you know, in some way, shape, or form. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, I'll link below what um, is still available 
Um, you should be able to get this collection still and um, lots of the shimmers and the, uh, the glimmer paste and things. But thank you so, so much for watching. I will be back soon with another video. I hope you guys have a great day.